Uh, yeah, I'm very excited to be part of this, uh, to this municipalist school. So as you said, I'm uh, part, mainly part of two organizations right now. It's Democratic Transition, which is a municipalist uh, organization working with popular education. And we're now, for example, translating this Fearless Cities book into Swedish. It's only there, almost finished. Uh, but I'm mainly working with uh, this or local organization in Bergen. Uh, during the, uh, so that's what I spend most of my time with. So first, a bit like Bergen, so that's the uh, suburb of uh, Gothenburg in the outskirts. Uh, is to get you to uh, where it is. It's about seventeen thousand people living in this borough, and uh, Gothenburg is really a segregated city. It's one of uh, Europe's most segregated cities, actually. Uh, and even if you think of Sweden as maybe being the most equal <laughs> country it's been, it's been the inequality has been growing a lot uh, from the like 80s and privatization has been growing. And as well specifically it's been uh, more like the people of color and immigrants, they are part of the more lower income and the marginalized uh, in society. And here in Bergen, um, yeah, big majority in Bergen are people of color and immigrants, low income, uh, big unemployment, low education, there is uh, more uh, violence and crime, etc. Um, and here in the, the hub in Bergen, we are working mainly with social issues, like the main basic needs that uh, people come with, and associations, and as well working with culture, so uh, that's what's mainly working as I'm working as with support work. So we are uh, building up a community center. And we are quite in the start of working with uh, the more local sustainable economy. So I'm really, there's something we're going to focus more on. And I'm just very happy to be here and to learn together and more from others. Um, so yeah, we're really in the, in the beginning of this. Uh, developing this, but what we have started to do um, is that we have done a local economy analysis. We're uh, oh, we're still developing it, but this is a method and tool that uh, is developed in Sweden, and it's been mainly used in more deprived uh, villages in the countryside of Sweden. Uh, and now we're starting to be more used as well in uh, suburbs in uh, bigger cities. So what's what it's about is first you look in the area and do research or like follow the money basically. So you look where are the money coming from and where are they disappearing. Uh, so where is the leakage of the money and how can you make the money stay and make a more sustainable uh, flourishing economy for the people in the area instead of extracting it, disappearing to international, multinational companies or outside of this area. Um, and in Sweden, you have a lot of statistics that you can actually, you pay a bit of money and you get the statistics uh, and you get to know like who works in the area, what are they working with, what companies are registered, how is it going for the companies. Um, yeah, they can really, so you can you see a lot of like, and who's living here and what are they working with. So you can as well, for example, see that a lot of, in Bergen, there's a lot of people, the people working in the bigger employers here, they don't actually live here. So there's a lot of people work from outside of Bergen coming here to work and then leaving. Um, yeah, and you have a lot of cultural workers, etc. Um, so from this analysis, you start to making plans and work groups. So that's what we are starting to do. So we have some different work groups we are working with, and we have an incubator that we are starting to support and to for to develop start new uh, cooperatives or local uh, uh, companies or to develop them. So this is a challenge now in, with COVID times. But some things we're starting to develop is like uh, different possibilities with where we're developing. And here is uh, as well, I can say, um, so we, my, what we're coming from is uh, really good that we are have this, like building up this, social work and community center and from there we're taking in working together with people as a solution. So it's a good base working from below. Um, and then we want to look out to be inspired from different 
learn from others, like you have Preston model, Cleveland model, how can we take that into and how we can work with things here in Bergen and to develop and uh, spread it. Some things to uh, mention some things we are doing with the food production. Uh, Bergen is uh, like really close to the countryside, so we have a lot of nature and land. And uh, so work and see how we can support local farmers that are in the outskirts of, of uh, Bergen and as well have the possibility to, to develop more uh, local farms and uh, growing vegetables. And as well, we're looking for more developing a distribution network for the lo local farms and growers and working with the local supermarket, how they can take in the products here because they don't do it today. So that's how we want to make the more distribution better. And this is small now, but there's possibilities. There's a school, agricultural school that we started. Uh, and as well, they have, they've got a city farmer actually. So the, the city municipality has a city farmer employed from the municipality growing for the municipality. It's small, but it's still, that's uh, something to build upon. Um, we're working, there's a lot of uh, women associations here that are cooking food and they want to develop this and to do catering. So, but they are missing a good uh, kitchen. So this health and safety, living up to the health and safety regulations. So we're looking at how we can develop this uh, kitchen and to develop more the catering and food production, food cookie, cooking. And we will see if we can do it. Actually, there's going to be built a big uh, cultural house here in Bergen. And so if we can manage to get the kitchen in there, actually this is the association's one of the main goals when they started was to get this uh, meeting place, a community center. Uh, but then it's actually, yeah, it's, uh, the municipality started to build it and they, we wanted it to be run by, by the citizens and associations, but then the municipality kind of took it their way. It's an own story. Now we're working on the relations to get back in there. Um, yeah, and then uh, we're looking into how we can develop more of this about repairing and reusing things. There are a lot of people here that are good on repairing things and uh, fixing things. And so there's a possibility to develop this to fix clothes, slippers, lamps, bicycles, etc. So that's something we're, we're looking into. Housing is an issue. Uh, there's uh, a lot of people are living quite crowded when you don't have not enough housing and uh, as well uh, to afford the rents and big families. And now we're, and as well refugees, immigrants that are being homeless. So there's an initiative here in the in labor of building small houses from reused materials. So we're looking how to support them and to scale it up and to get some support from some uh, scholars to and uh, schools to help out with this. Um, energy, we are looking into energy, the house where I live in, it's a housing cooperative. So we own the house cooperatively. And it's quite actually a unique, good example how we've been using, working with energy. So we have uh, put solar panels on all the walls on the surroundings. It's an eight stories high um, house. So it's quite tall and big. 35 flats and common spaces. We have the whole, all the walls are covered with solar panels and the roof. And as well, we have been putting like this much extra um, isolation on the house. So we have managed to 70% of all the electricity we're using is coming from the solar panels. Then an example, when you have the power over our house, we can decide over our budget what to do with it. And we've been taking loans to cover this and uh, from this, Ethical Eco Bank. So, the 70% of the electricity we use are coming from these um, solar panels. And we have, because we isolated the house really well and new windows, etc. So, we have lowered the energy from heating up with 80%, which is quite a lot in cold, colder country like Sweden. So, this, and we have done all this without uh, increasing the rents. So, though we no, now we have a little bit of problems with all the entrepreneurs have not been doing their job and now they are bankrupt so we have some problems so <laughs> we might have to redo it all but oh well <laughs> that's another story of something we want to develop but we could develop is uh, we see this as, as an example working with energy and have other 
uh, house owners can do the same. And uh, as well, we would see how we can develop cooperatives doing this. So we could have the power doing it in a good way instead of this companies doing it in a bad way. Uh, and so then we can make uh, power over the energy and uh, work and jobs, incomes and the uh, economy. Uh, the environmental good thing about it. Uh, and what we want to look into is like how we can as well look into procurement, like the Preston and Cleveland model, where you can uh, make um, uh, deals with the uh, big actors and the municipality to actually buy the services from uh, the local uh, businesses and cooperatives to have a sustainable <laughs> way of doing it. For example, with the energy supply, we have a lot of big. Uh, municipal owned houses, which could do this. Um, so that's a possibility. 